Carbon fiber is an amazing material. It's made out of little strands glued together called, well, carbon fibers. Compared to metal materials, this allows carbon fiber bike builders to really finely tailor the characteristics and the ride quality of the bike. A carbon fiber bike can be stiff when you're putting power through the pedals while still being compliant enough to absorb a lot of the road vibration while also being the lightest material to make a bike out of. It is the ultimate performance material to make a bike out of. But carbon fiber has one glaring issue that outweighs all of its benefits if you're a daily cyclist. It might just kill you. There's a lot of thoughts and feelings in the cycling world and perhaps the most contentious topic is carbon fiber bikes. In this video, I'm gonna talk about my thoughts, feelings, and experiences with carbon fiber. If you have a different opinion than me, great. Let's have a discussion in the comments below and be civil about it. As for my take on carbon fiber, which depending on your opinion may be a hot take, if you're not a performance cyclist, if you're not a bike racer, if you're just a daily cyclist, you bike to work, you bike to the grocery store, you bike for fun, stay completely away from carbon fiber bike components because it may just save your life. Get your tinfoil hats on because the bottom line is that carbon fiber dominates cycling marketing and has become such an accepted material because it makes bike companies so much more money than metal materials. It's great for business, it's bad for consumers, especially if you're just a daily non-competitive cyclist. But if you are just a daily non-competitive cyclist, I have just the bike for you. This video's sponsor, Wabi Cycles. Wabi steel bikes are the most fun that I've ever had throwing a leg over a bike. There's just nothing else that rides like heat treated, lightweight steel tubing. Stick around to the end of the video to learn what makes Wabi Cycle so special. The biggest drawback of carbon fiber bikes is safety and safety first. The thing with metal materials is that before they completely fail on you, they will show signs that they're about to give. There'll be a huge dent, they'll be cracked, they'll buckle, they won't just entirely explode on you unexpectedly from underneath you, unlike carbon fiber. Because carbon fiber is a matrix of carbon fibers glued together, that means that there can be imperfections inside the carbon fiber weave that you can't see that could lead to a failure. And there's no way that you could possibly know that there's a crack or a void inside a carbon fiber weave unless you take an x-ray to it. And not every home mechanic just has x-rays lying around. Because of that, it is extremely important to know that your specific carbon fiber component is made to the highest standards with the highest quality control and extremely well designed. There is a huge disparity between different qualities of carbon fiber. A cheap China carbon carbon fiber frame set could potentially kill you. Whereas another one from a big reputable brand, if it's made well and well inspected, can be perfectly safe to ride. But even then, carbon fiber from big reputable brands can have imperfections in them that can lead to failure and can lead to dying. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. <laughs> carbon fiber is also extremely stiff. It doesn't bend or buckle unlike metal materials. If you slam a sledgehammer into this steel frame set, it'll dent. It's not just going to explode. Carbon fiber, on the other hand, might just explode when it does fail. It will splinter, it shatters, it snaps. And all of this can happen while you're riding the carbon fiber component without any warning that it's going to happen. It can look completely fine on the outside and completely shatter underneath you. And the splinters of carbon fiber, if you're in a crash, can be fatal themselves and stab you in places that you'd rather not be stabbed in, which is anywhere. Over the past 150 years or so, the metal bike has pretty much been figured out, especially for steel bikes. Meanwhile, carbon fiber is still being figured out, which means that there's a lot of innovation in carbon fiber bike components and a lot of improvements, which makes it exciting, but it also makes it a lot less safe. 10 years ago, metal bottom bracket shells were standard on carbon fiber bikes. And now carbon fiber bike manufacturers have figured out that metal and carbon fiber and trying to fuse them together doesn't really work out so well because these two 
foreign materials to each other don't want to bond and over time they can delaminate from each other and essentially just get unstuck. Yeah, kind of sketchy. And who knows, maybe there's a lot of things that we're doing today that will be seen as foolish and extremely unsafe in 10 more years. For us daily cyclists, being able to ride home to see our spouses, our families, our friends, and to be able to live another day is way more important than getting marginal gains because we use the most bleeding edge bike possible. Good boy. All right, you'll get paid at the end of the week. The safety of your bike is especially important if you do things with your bike, like lock it up at a rack where it will be sitting for hours and someone's mom with a big beach cruiser might bash their bike into yours or you crash your bike. Hint, hint, everybody does. That's why they're called accidents or you have your bike fall over because the wind blew and it was leaning on a wall in a way that the manufacturer didn't intend or designed for. And pro tip, no manufacturer intends for their carbon fiber bikes to fall over onto the ground. And then as carbon ages, as it gets older and older, the glue can delaminate and not be as strong as it was when it was manufactured. Carbon fiber is the perfect material for bike companies to make lots of money off of while being terrible for most cyclists. And most of the marketing will say, oh, look at all these pros riding these amazing bikes and look how fast they're going. If you want to be this fast on a bicycle, you need to ride this extremely expensive carbon fiber bike. Because of that, the carbon fiber market for bicycles is driven by what's trendy and not necessarily what's a good idea. The best ideas stand the test of time like the Wabi Special has been around since 2009, or the Safety Bicycle has been around since 1885, which we now call the Bicycle. Carbon fiber is still being figured out by engineers, pros, and us consumers who have the privilege to pay $6,000 to be a giant corporation's guinea pig. But the main reason that carbon fiber is marketed this way is because it's very profitable for bike companies, especially compared to traditional metal materials. Look, I studied marketing in college and generally whatever the product is, whatever product category it is, the higher it is in that category, the more expensive it is, the more profitable it's going to be. The most profitable bikes are going to be the most expensive bikes and the most expensive bikes are carbon fiber. Other reasons carbon fiber is very expensive is because a lot of R&D has to go into them. There's a lot of engineering and there's a lot of labor and a lot of human time that goes into making any carbon fiber component. And to engineer these bleeding edge race machines, they are by hand gluing these carbon fiber strands together. And it's essentially like raw spaghetti. And fun fact, raw spaghetti is also carbon-based. And then there's also the pro tax. Well, look at this carbon fiber bike that won the Tour de France. It's the fastest bike in the world. And here's a pro tip for you. Bikes aren't fast. People are fast. Carbon fiber is also pretty fragile so that bike parts that were traditionally made out of metal materials can now be disposable. And disposable in the sense that they don't have a super long lifetime not disposable in the sense that it's okay to just throw it away. <laughs> Metal bike parts lifespans are measured in decades or even in lifetimes, whereas carbon fibers lifespans is measured in years, months, or even miles. All the pros race on carbon fiber bikes because that's what their sponsors give them. And all their sponsors give the pros carbon fiber bikes because that's what makes them the most money. Pro cycling is essentially just one big advertisement. And the most profitable material to make bikes out of is carbon fiber because it's made to be thrown away. Carbon fiber is amazing. You can sell the exact person, the exact same carbon fiber bike if they crash it and break it, or even if they're just afraid that it might be broken and it's easier to just buy a new one than it is to get it inspected. And it's even more amazing when you consider the thousands and thousands of dollars that these carbon fiber bikes cost. If you crash a metal bike, if it looks good, it is good. You keep on riding and you move on with your day, no sales are made. And the thing is, pros get free, very expensive bikes every season. And for us lay cyclists to keep up with the Joneses of the pros, we have to spend 
insane amounts of money. Straight up, carbon fiber bikes are just a better business model than metal bikes. You can make way more money, way more consistently, selling carbon fiber bikes compared to metal bikes. If you crash or bang up a carbon fiber bike, it needs to be inspected by a highly trained specialist. If it needs to be repaired, it can be extremely expensive because it's niche and requires lots of technical knowledge. So then you'll get customers that will just outright buy a new bike and not get their old carbon fiber inspected because it's expensive or they don't have anybody nearby or it'll take too long or they don't it'll cost too much to repair and just throw away that old bike and buy a new carbon fiber bike and then you as a carbon bike seller can make the big bucks everyone says you shouldn't ride crashed carbon without having it expected and rightfully so because it might kill you so these carbon fiber bike companies are selling fear fear that you're going to literally get left behind because your bike is too slow and pro tip it's not the bike that's the problem it's you and i that's the problem <laughs> the fear that you're not a good enough rider and the fear that your bike might kill you you just don't get the same sales pitch as like well this steel reynolds 725 wobby is extremely springy and fun to ride and it'll last me for the rest of my life as long as i don't get into a really bad accident i even plan on passing this bike down to my grandkids metal bikes particularly steel or the old way of doing business where you get a really good product for your money that will last forever. Whereas carbon fiber bikes are the new way of doing business where you get something that is bright and shiny and jam packed with technology, but it won't last very long and is extremely hard to repair and extremely expensive and made to be disposable. Basically, carbon fiber bikes are like the iPhone of bicycles. <laughs> For daily cyclists, the drawbacks of carbon fiber far outweigh the benefits. If you're someone that locks up your bike for hours on end, or you sometimes crash your bike, you bash your bike, you throw it in the backs of cars with other bikes on top of it. Sometimes your bike falls over. There's the huge safety concern with carbon fiber bicycles. And then on top of that, us daily cyclists aren't super going to be benefiting from the amazing qualities of carbon fiber yes carbon fiber can be beneficial for cyclists especially if you're a pro level cyclist that's in peak riding condition where all of your competition is on a cocktail of performance enhancing drugs and you yourself are on performance enhancing drugs and every single little marginal difference marginal gain can mean the difference between winning and losing and getting paid or not yeah it matters then but for us daily cyclists, like how fast does your commute need to be? Nobody cares that you got to work in 29 minutes versus 31 minutes. Like, <laughs> and if your commute time is really that important to you, then you should consider driving or running red lights or better yet doing both. You'll save so much time if you run red lights in your car. On top of that, most carbon fiber bikes don't have a lot of features that make bikes useful for daily life. Most carbon fiber bikes don't have mounts for racks so that you can carry stuff, you can get groceries, <laughs> you can bring a bottle of wine to a picnic. A lot of them don't have room or mounts for full fenders so that you can ride in the rain under suboptimal conditions. A lot of them don't have a lot of tire clearance, although that is changing but generally metal bikes are going to have bigger tire clearances still. Or it's just plain sacrilegious to put townie bars, a bell, and a basket on a carbon fiber bike, even though you can. And that's another thing with carbon fiber bikes, because it is such a high performance material, to a certain extent, you have to get into a high performance carbon fiber mindset to fully appreciate it and not look like a poser. <laughs> and a lot of times that means being very focused on improving your performance, your wattage, your time on a certain route, which for me, and I imagine for a lot of you, would suck the fun out of cycling, which is the reason why we ride bikes in the first place. Look, when I was in Taiwan, I did a uh, bike ride around Sun Moon Lake. And Giant, yeah, that Giant, one of the biggest bike companies in the world, is from Taiwan, and they had a uh, rental bike shop where I rented a Giant TCR to ride around Sun Moon Lake, which is one of the most beautiful places to ride in the world. But during that ride on that carbon fiber bike, I was just thinking like, I know the odds of this bike shattering underneath me and exploding and killing me or others or seriously hurting me is extremely low, extremely low. But I also know it's a non-zero percent. 
like how many people have ridden this bike? How old is this bike? How often do they inspect the internal walls of this bike? Is it cracked? How many tourists have crashed this bike? Is this bike going to kill me today? And all of those thoughts ruminating in the back of my head sucked a lot of the enjoyment out of one of the most beautiful bike rides in the world. I review a lot of bikes. A lot of them are aluminum frames with carbon forks. And whenever I am done, Reviewing a bike that has a carbon fork, I am just so relieved to go back to my completely steel frame set because I know it's not going to kill me. I don't have to baby my steel bike. I can ride exactly as hard as I want to because it can keep up. I can lock it up. I can throw it in the back of a car. I can throw another bike on top of it. And for me, having that peace of mind and using the bike how I want to use it, knowing that it can keep up with me is way more fun than adjusting my abilities and my riding style and how I use my bike just because the material is too fragile and too high performance. If you're not a bike racer, if you don't care about chasing Strava KOMs or taking lots of performance enhancing drugs to be as fast as humanly possible on a bicycle and you're reaching for a carbon fiber bike component, ask yourself, why? What benefit does that carbon fiber component give you? How light does your bike need to be? Will it make your bike more reliable, more fun? Because us daily cyclists have extremely different needs from the pro cyclists in the Tour de France. Even if the billions of dollars spent every single year on bicycle marketing doesn't reflect that. So it's up to us to look through all the marketing BS to determine what we actually need, what we actually want as cyclists and decide that it's more important to have a bike that doesn't have the potential to kill us than it is to save a few seconds off of our commute. Because after all, bikes themselves aren't fast. The bike, it just sits there. It's not the bike that's fast, it's the rider that is fast. And fixy famous shout outs to David K, Salvador Lombroso, Julian Corona, Brandon Black, Brent David, Mario Perez, Ted Entry, and Breakless.Illini for helping to make these fixed gear videos possible through your support on Patreon. And remember that life is short, but don't make it shorter. So be sure to ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous.